Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. Thanks for being part of the family. Uh, we really appreciate your support. This was a Patreon exclusive we did yesterday. It did involve some channeling information. Uh, for those that aren't aware of channeling, channeling is something that's happening in ever-increasing numbers on the planet. In fact, there are so many people right now that truly are channeling um, higher densities. And then there's some that, you know, maybe are channeling the, the CIA, the FBI, etc. as well. Uh, <laughs> just to be blunt. Yeah, then there's that. There is. There is. How do you tell the difference? It's all about your frequency. It really, really is. It's all about what you prioritize. And this one was, I thought, very interesting, and uh, it was fun. It was talking about King David and King Solomon. Uh, they are absolutely not who you are told if you are following the mainstream narrative. Ooh, man, it is, it, it's just off the charts flooding right now throughout, I would say, Central Europe. This is in Poland. Um, I have been saying, again, for so long, that when we go through these great redos, the great redos, it's like it always kind of uh, involves a, a flooding event of a mud sort. And can you not see it? I mean, just when you look at this, look at where the water is like right now. And if you did see consistent, which, you know, again, these floods that... In, in ages past, you know, growing up, we didn't see these type of events every single day. When they keep happening like this all around the globe and the intensification of, of these flooding events, at some point in time, you know, you end up with uh, first floors of buildings becoming basements. And, you know, we could see evidence of this all around the globe. Look at this. This is Czech Republic. So we started off in Poland. This is the Czech Republic. Just massive, massive flooding. Mm, I know, I know. And what are we going to do with this? This is awful. You know, there's like street lamps that should be seven feet over your head that are going to be lighting up people's knees pretty soon. It's really bad. Sending, we, we, we really should send positive energy to those for, for a good outcome because... I, I never forget that this is affecting people's livelihoods on a very, very, very grand scale. I mean, there's pets, there's children, there's displacement, there's tired moms, tired dads, and everyone's being affected. Their lives are being turned upside down, and they are also sending out a ripple of energy that is, you know, uh, distressing. So those who are channels and who are very strong empaths, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you're not feeling some of that. And if you do, be sure to transmute it. Be sure to turn it into something positive and productive. Absolutely. This is Storm Boris, and it's absolutely wrecking havoc across Central Europe. Major flooding, widespread in the region. Multiple countries are involved in this. You know, if, if we are witnessing um, the prophecy of Alois Ermiler coming to pass, he was again saying that when the war really starts and Russia goes, they run right through Ukraine very quickly. Uh, again, many people understand that the war in Ukraine has served a purpose. And, and it is all, I mean, Ukraine didn't even exist when you go back to the 1970s as an independent country. But then if you go back to the 1930s, Israel didn't exist either. This is all part of a much bigger picture going on. This, according to Alois Ermiler, this particular area that's getting flooded right now, if this is the year that he did see um, that global World War III starting, uh, this area will be swamped not by water but by troops uh, in, in perhaps just a, a month or two. We'll have to see and we'll have to use our intent to, again, understand everything that's underway and counteract that by awakening as many people as possible and using our intentions to push back against uh, the plans of the dark matrix. As you see this flooding in Poland, now there was a dam that burst and there's some photos that are just insane to show you how quickly uh, this can happen. And again, this area 
is is not on the ocean. This is not on the Mediterranean Sea. This is not uh, up in the Baltic. Uh, we're talking relatively mountainous area. No, Do you, d no well, well, yeah, there could be lakes and streams, obviously. Um, that is, again, uh, something to be very, very aware of, as well as you know, where are the dams in your area in this time? Because this happened very fast, more from Poland. This uh, is an area where a bridge was swept away, as you can see. The streets are absolutely rivers, and you know I, all the mud flood evidence I've looked at, if we just solidify this into mud and then it becomes ground, that's exactly what we've looked at in the past. This is Vienna, Austria. I mean, these, these are beautiful places, very historic. Uh, and even, I, I'm even looking at it from here and I'm wondering if there's evidence of mud flood over here. <laughs> you know, again, this has happened cyclically and I think it happens way more often uh, than people think, uh, way more often. Here you go. This is Stroni Slaski, Poland. This is where um, you have that dam that burst. Look at this flooding. Again, send your prayers out because when you see this type of flooding, I, I really, you know, I have to wonder um, how many people are affected by this and, you know, how, how will we know? It'll take a while to understand the damage you know how, how about these houses are they going to even be habitable after this type of flooding with that water damage look at this one right here this is one hour apart look at that you're seeing the top that's that's one hour you know get to the roof fast and and try to get on top of a tree it's just incredible and this is two hours that's terrifying, you know, when you think about it. This is not a low-lying area. This is not an area even on, on again, the shore of an ocean or a sea. But when you have a dam like this that's being breached like that, look at this. Do you realize how much water that is? That is, that's truly, truly, truly terrifying. You know, if uh, people don't have time to get out, and I I don't think of just the people. I always think of the pets. I think of the animals. I think of the cows, the deer, the horses, you know, livestock, uh, people's livelihoods just, just washed away. And I do not think in any way that this is something that the earth is doing. No, I think she's being manipulated in a way. I think there's things going on, and they use the technology to create a, a bigger problem problem you know and if we were if we were all aware of that technology we would know where to point our focus and who to ask the questions to this is not the earth doing what the earth does and this is all the way down in italy so you know this is affecting northern italy and switzerland as well you know again uh, gorgeous beautiful historic areas over 900 people dead or missing in floods this is in Myanmar. this was typhoon yagi um, so you have a quarter of a million people displaced, you know, have lost their homes. Entire regions submerged under floodwaters. Uh, we're heading into an even more intense period. And you have Europe hit by abrupt weather shift as the heat dome collapsed. Brings in early snowfall, torrential rainfall, and a cold blast. And has caught people... Um, very much surprised and stunned as they went from perhaps, you know, uh, very unusually hot temps to just the opposite. And you have a Canadian woman that died in a sudden snowstorm while climbing a mountain. Uh, it's just incredible, you know, it, it, what we're seeing happening. It's history repeating itself. This is over in Russia. Uh, Ivanovo Oblast over in Russia. L look at this house. So obviously, I mean, we see this time and time again. And, you know, there's been, uh, you, you know, those that, that know their history, the layers to Paris, for instance, are very deep. And there's so many submerged subterranean cities beneath us where people were probably going through exactly what we're going through in this day 
thinking if they were biblically minded <laughs> we're living in the in the end times and then they were hit with these cataclysms that literally buried everything that they were used to seeing and viewing and then you know those that did survive the great redo uh, started over and civilization starts its climb again only to experience another you know mud flood event and it's not just a mud flood because you know again there's always the wars that go on there's always the plagues that go on it is very very biblical and uh, we touch on exactly how um, things are not at all what they seem to be it takes a little digging it takes a lot of discernment uh, to recognize that this is bigger than a 12,000 year cycle. It, it happens much, much more often than that. Uh, the thing that we can take heart in is that we are uh, leaving a Kali Yuga. But be careful about what you're eating, as you see, partially produced with genetic engineering. Yeah, well, yeah, I wouldn't be eat anything, well, obviously, when you're looking at this. Yeah, what's your first ingredient, uh, sugar? <laughs> no thanks. And then you got different dyes and you got all different additives. You know, they got sugar, then they got corn starch, and then they got corn syrup, then they got dextrin. I mean, how many different versions of sugar can you possibly fit into something? This causes inflammation in your body. It weakens your immune system. And, you know, most likely you won't make it through these times if, if, if this is the type of stuff that you are taking in on a regular basis because it's just going to wreak havoc with your immune system. <clears throat> no, I mean, this is really, really bad. If, you're, if you are struggling with any kind of uh, <clears throat> inflammation, <clears throat> excuse me, this is really going to make that a lot, lot worse. It, it, I mean, it's going to cause pain too. So... If you're someone who has like uh, joints, like aches and pains, or if anything go is going on, if you have back pain, anything, and you're eating this, just take note of what goes on, you know, uh, some hours afterwards, or it could be immediately after, it might even be the next day. But so much of people's severe pain is linked to the stuff that, that we were showing on the other screen. Yeah, absolutely. And then we talk about, you know, the events that bury civilizations under. And I remember when I was a kid, we just thought they were giant heads on Easter Island. We didn't realize that the heads had bodies. And it's just the fact that all this dirt has accumulated over time. Um, again, a volcanic uh, island group will, will experience more rapid growth. But there's been a lot of... Um, of these type of events throughout time. In fact, we see it all the time. Easter Islanders procreated with Native Americans centuries before the arrival of Europeans. And of course, Polynesians are the ones that supposedly originally in inhabited this area. Just so, in case you, you're not really familiar with geography, and maybe I assume too much because I'm the type of person that looks at things like maps and, and almanacs just all the time for for just fun. Uh, Easter Island's here. Now, if we if we really think about the history and what they, they give us, can you imagine people in little dugout boats going way out into the Pacific Ocean to settle here? Or the fact that Polynesians, again, from areas like Tonga and, and through here, Papua New Guinea, going you know massive distances and these tiny little boats out in the middle of the biggest ocean uh yeah i don't really think so again what we get is that when we look to atlantis you know it was a global civilization uh, same thing with lemuria mu and and also tartaria yeah these were global and the reality is when you look to the especially look to the clarity that's given in the Hindu stories where they just talk about the different gods going by in their flying machines and classifying the different Vimanas by type. Vimana, again, some sort of flying vehicle. There was a, there's a channel, um, and I'll, I won't name it, but, you know, again, they're doing a lot to uncover things like mud flood and our buried history. But then he's talking about um, 
these different pieces of artwork that are showing angels and he's really thinking that angels are transporting people from one continent to another one country to another in the air it's like it's amazing that some people can't see the fact that you know what we're talking about is extraterrestrial because a true angel is a non-physical being you know that that's just like why can't people see this well it's because they're under that that black magic god spell and they really have been so indoctrinated that that they can't see what's right in front of their face you know the forest for the trees Mm -hmm. they're they're stuck and and uh people usually go by whatever is indoctrinated into the system whatever is hardwired and that's why they start things like sunday school preschool they start it as early as possible to get this hardwiring in there because if you have it hardwired you don't have to worry about anyone thinking of anything other than what they have been told and the sun uh, is doing something it's not supposed to do. It's actually far more active, more active uh, than going back to 2001. Um, so again, you know, the activity has taken them by surprise. But again, the science is given to us by the system. So w- even when you're looking at ice core samples that are telling a history, how do we know we can trust them? You can't. You can't trust any of the science. I trust the myths a lot more than I trust anything that comes from the science. And again, we go deep and we prioritize our spiritual practice. You know, literally the other day, I spent uh, over two hours in meditation, mantras, in yoga and qigong, about two, two and a half hours. You know, so this is the, the blessing that we have is that you know we're not working um for the corporate machinery at this point in time which is huge and and we're grateful for that that we can do um do our part by sharing these videos and trying to wake up other people to the fact that most people live their lives for the system that's just the way it is and they want humanity to live its life dedicated to the system when we should be living our life in exploration of ourselves and our friends, our family, our loved ones, you know, our family members with four legs. It, it, it's just, you know, we don't even understand that this is not what was intended to be. Yeah, you know, whether it's nine to five or much more, as you know, I did spend decades working 60 hours a week for corporations until it was making me uh, insane and physically ill and I just couldn't do it anymore. So I had to take that chance and go out on my own. And yeah, it was not easy. Um, But again, you know, even with this, we're still using the money system at this point in time until other things can be developed, barter and trade, you know, something else going along with working with those that are in uh, the circles that you're in locally Um, and perhaps you know if the technology is you know they use the technology to enslave us so they don't want to take all the technology away oh no 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 then they lose control you know that's how the few control the the many look at these guys they're so cute you know i i mean i i look at the system and i and i know that there is a way that we can get the system to work for us. I I don't feel that we are stuck just working for the system. I I think I feel there's plenty of us to dig our way into that system and create alternative ways of living and turn it around. I think we can turn it on them. I really, really do. But we've got to be smart about it. You know, we got to do baby steps. We didn't get here overnight absolutely not and and i think it's very unfair the way we got here i think the way we got here was through little baby steps and them making something appear that oh this is okay you know this is no big deal this is going to make your life just a little bit easier but if we go back and talk with our grandparents our parents and our great grandparents and figure out how did they do things and then change the way we do things because it all starts with us we are that point of change you are the point of change and these dogs this is just so stinking cute i absolutely love this video absolutely again thank you guys so much for your support we couldn't do it without you guys like share subscribe make sure you do share these videos whether it's us or other channels that are trying to fight for the freedom of humanity 
you know, do your best to to share and to awaken others. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.